God loves you even though you're a sinner. And God doesn't love us because we're lovable. But God loves us because it's his character and nature to love sinners. Jesus died in your place and my place so that we wouldn't suffer punishment. And Jesus lives in you so you can display his character. Let me try to illustrate this with a couple of diagrams. Notice the two circles. The one on the left represents a natural person, a person that's not a Christian, an unbeliever. All of us are made up in the image of God. And God is a threefold person, a triunity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. When it says we are made in the image of God, we are a triunity body, soul, and spirit. With your body, you relate to the physical world. With your soul, you relate to the social world. And with your spirit, you relate to the spiritual world. I hope you understand that's what makes you different than a monkey or a dog or a cow. You and I have a spirit. They don't. Animals have bodies and they have souls. They have personalities, but they don't have a spirit. Have you ever seen cows? coming through the door of a church on Sunday morning to worship God? Have, have you seen, you know, cats and dogs line up to come into worship service? No. Of course, there was that one time there was a squirrel. As the choir sang, I surrender all, the squirrel ran up Harv Newland's coveralls, and Harv leaped to his feet and said, Something's got a hold on me! Yeah! The day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in a sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping pews and shouting, Hallelujah! Why don't dogs come to church? Why don't cats go to catechism or something like that and study spiritual things? They're clueless. They have no idea of God. You and I do. If you look at the circles again, in the one on the left side, I put an X. Because for a person who's not a Christian, their spirit is dead or dormant. Look at the circle on the right. That represents a person who is a Christian. When a person becomes a Christian, they receive light in their spirit. And their spirit comes alive. Basically, a person who's an unbeliever is full of self. You can use the word ego or you could use the word I. A person who's not a Christian basically lives an egocentric existence. They're the center of their own universe. They determine the value of everything by the way it affects them and the way they feel about it and what they think about it. Me is at the center. The whole universe revolves around them. A person can be a lost person and they don't have to be a serial murderer or a rapist or a bank robber. They can be nice but they are just a self-centered person. By the way, some of you who are still so full of stinking self need to ask yourselves if you've ever come to the place in your life where you've determined that you're going to dethrone self. Where like Paul, you say, self has been crucified. The difference is Christ is in you, filling your spirit, filling your soul, and yes, in a person with the Holy Spirit, even indwelling your body. This person on the right, a true believer, lives a Jesus-centered existence. No longer is ego at the center of the, their own little universe, but Jesus is at the center of everything. The secret to living the Christian life is not trying to imitate Jesus. It's not trying to perform all these Christian acts in the strength of your own flesh. Because Jesus said in the 15th chapter of John, without me, you can do nothing. The secret to the Christian life is allowing Jesus simply to control every part of your life. So his character is just displayed. Let me illustrate it this way. Here's a glove, which is empty, of course. The glove, that represents a person who's not full of Jesus. Okay, glove, pick up that cup. Come on, you old sorry glove, you 
old backslidden sinful glove, pick up that cup. Okay, glove, pick up this phone. You nice looking handsome glove, please pick up that phone. I can be angry or I can be nice, but that glove isn't going to do anything until it's filled with something. When it's filled with something, that's when it has the ability to do it. It's a simple matter to do what it's supposed to do when it's filled. It's not the glove that's doing it. It's me and the glove that's doing it. Some of you have had surgery and that surgeon, you know, slips on gloves, but you would never for a moment say you were operated on by surgical gloves. You were operated on by the skill and knowledge and technique of the surgeon's hand that was in the glove. Here's the application. You as a person can't love unlovely people. Aren't you tired of being frustrated trying to love all these unlovely people? You as a natural person can't forgive people who wrong you. You can't do it. You can't rejoice in the Lord always. You can't give thanks for all things. There are so many things in the Christian life that we can't do on our own, but Jesus can do it. So it's a matter of surrendering every moment to the light of Jesus in you. Those of you who want some theological words, when you were saved, that's justification. One day when you die and go to heaven and you're like Jesus, that's glorification. But this process that I'm talking about right now is sanctification. It's Jesus working in you. It's a process. In fact, it says in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God loves you and you're a sinner. Jesus died for you so you wouldn't have to suffer punishment. And Christ lives in you so you can display his character. Here's the final benefit, number four. And all I have to do is mention it because when you realize these benefits, you'll shout for joy. If you have some fringe benefits on your job, like hospitalization, yet you go to the hospital and you pay out of your own pocket the money for your hospitalization, you're the one that loses out. You're not taking advantage of the benefits. If you go through the Christian life miserable, you're just not realizing the benefits that are yours. Look at verse 11. Not only is this so, but we also rejoice in God. If you can just get a hold of this and hang in there with it and understand it and believe it, you'll be shouting for joy. Life is tough, but with Jesus, you can make it through any challenge. Thank you, Lord, for the love that you have for us, those benefits that are so unique and so special. And I pray, Lord, that we would take advantage of those benefits the benefit of salvation, the benefit of you living in us, that you care so much for us, and that you can live in and through us. We're the ones that get in the way. And I pray that we would allow you inside to fill us with your spirit, that we would allow you to orchestrate and work through us to do the things that are impossible to do without Jesus. In Jesus' Let name I pray. Be light. Open the eyes of the blind. Purify our hearts in